Hello everyone and welcome back to Pepples Pottinger. Today is July 17th, 2021 and it's been a while since I've done a garden update. So it's time to get started here. As you can see, I have lots of vines running everywhere. I have lots of pumpkins and sugar cube melons and some watermelon plants over here just vining all over the place. You can see the bean arbors coming along nicely. Got some carminot green beans growing there and then down there you can see some some of the angel hair spaghetti squash vines growing uh, but uh, let's go ahead and we'll check out a lot of these beds one by one here starting off the squash and zucchini are not doing so good right now you can see that the squash borers have hit the plants and uh, they are wilting and some of them are just falling over you can see some of the squash borer damage in there and so it's pretty typical they usually hit my Plants right about the middle of July and I cannot complain because I did get lots and lots of squash and zucchini off these plants it is still trying to produce a few let's look over here on the other side you have a few zucchini still trying to form on there and it looks like there's at least one more temp of squash there growing so still may get a few more squash off of these before they finally die off. I may replace them. I don't know what I'm going to grow in this bed after they die off here. Uh, but uh, we'll just wait and see. And then down here we have the strawberry bed. And it is still doing great. You can see there's still quite a few strawberries on these plants. So still getting some strawberries. Just picked a few here this morning. So that's still doing good. And then let's walk over here to the watermelon and sugar cube melon bed. The watermelons are doing okay, uh, but the sugar cube melons have pretty much taken over the entire bed almost. You can see both the sugar cube melon and the watermelon vines are mixed together there. I do have a few weeds popping up here and there, you can see. Might have to get in there and pull those out. There are a few watermelon here. There's one there. There's some couple of uh, sugar cube melons there. And actually I actually have more sugar cube melons than I do watermelons. I planted the watermelons really late because they like the warm temperatures. As you can see, there's sugar cube melon there. And you can see another one right there. Another one here. So quite a few of them come along. And there's uh, a good many over there hidden under the vines over there as well. And then over here, this is the renegade pumpkins that I'm growing. And you can see it's basically just one single vine per plant stretched halfway across the pottager garden and almost wrapping around the dwarf cherry tree here. And if you look inside here, you can see there's one really large pumpkin there. And there's one over here on this side. So I got two rather large pumpkins growing there. Hopefully I get some more, but uh, we'll wait and see how they do. Uh, the blackberries aren't doing so great this year. Like I said, didn't have a lot of canes uh, form last year. So therefore this year I won't get a lot of blackberries. But you can see there are some on there. Some of them not quite ripe yet. And uh, let's... Move on around this way. You can see I pulled out all my pea plants. And it's possible I may replant the peas for August. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, not sure if I want to do that yet or maybe even plant some corn. It's a, a short variety of corn. Maybe I'll get some corn by October. I haven't decided on that yet. But, uh, and here are the Carminot green beans. And you can see they start out purple, but when you cook them, they do turn green. And they have pretty much filled out, or almost filled out, the bean arbor here. The uh, vines are beaning right there in the middle there a little bit, but haven't quite come completely over the top. But you can see I have a lot of green beans here to pick. Or shall I say purple green beans. 
Love the uh, purple blossoms on these. And the marigolds down here at the bottom of the arbor are doing great. You can see one of the angel hair spaghetti squash vines are coming through the bean arbor there. Let's walk on around this way. This is the angel hair squash bed. And as you can see, there's not many squash in there right now because I've already picked uh, about 20 of them off these plants. And I'll show you uh, where they are uh, when I'm done this video. Uh, I've actually picked about 20, but I was only able to save about 15 or 16 of them because the squash borers did hit the angel hair spaghetti squash and it actually hit a couple of the fruits or a couple of the squash on on the vines as well so they were boring into the actual squash themselves but uh, i still did get at least uh, i believe about 16 of the spaghetti squash off of here and i'll show you those uh, when i'm done the video here And you can see the vines are growing all through the different pathways here. And you can see some powdery mildew on them now. They were doing quite well as far as powdery mildew goes up until about last week. And then they started to get some. This is somewhat powdery mildew resistant. So uh, it can still get some powdery mildew. Resistance just means it can fight it off a little bit better. And then moving on here to the tomatoes and peppers on this side this is the brandy boys here and as you can see i have uh, several ripe tomatoes on there ready to pick i've already picked quite a few of the brandy boys and i've also picked quite a few of the brandy wines the brandy wine blacks you can see there's one right there ready to pick some of them are a little bit cracked but still good to pick I've already picked a good many of the Brandywine Blacks and I've also taken some of them to work and given them away so they've been coming along nicely. I'll show you uh, how many I got on the kitchen counter here in a little while. But uh, they are doing great and the peppers down front here, you can see they're doing very well. These are the large ninja peppers. They are doing great. There's another ninja pepper right here. They're just a regular uh, bell pepper. It's supposed to uh, produce a nice canopy that helps prevent sun scald on the peppers. And this is right here. We have the uh, confetti peppers, which is the variegated pepper that I've been talking about. You can see, if you look really closely, you can see the variegation in the peppers themselves. They will start turning to an orange and red, and they really put on a nice show of color out here when they really start changing changing colors. I think there's one down here that's starting to change color. I can show you that one right there. But these are the snack size peppers. And moving around to the other side here. This is the carbon tomatoes I have growing here. And as you can see, they are not doing that great. Uh, some of them are a little on the short side. I think that might be partially due to, there's not a lot of sun on this side due to the peach trees. If you look behind me here, you can see my peach trees. They tend to shade out the sun a little bit, so I may have to trim these down this year, uh, late in the spring or maybe early spring next year. That way it doesn't uh, shade a lot of the sun out on this part of the bed. Uh, but uh, I have been getting some tomatoes off of them. Uh, there's this particular carbon tomato plant here as you can see you look at the bottom of it it seems to be kind of a white bleached color and I think it got infected with some sort of white mold and it is only affecting that particular plant it's not affecting any of the other ones so I don't think it will spread I will have to pull that out uh, but uh, not doing too bad I have gotten at least four or five tomatoes off of these and then looks like I may have a few more down here I can pick. Um, 
but it doesn't look like I'm going to get a whole lot off the carbon tomatoes. Then move down here. This carbon tomato plant does have a few uh, larger tomatoes on it, but most of them are on the small side. Uh, the Cherokee Purple Haver are doing very, very well. You can see the large cluster of tomatoes here. I have some down at the bottom there as well. And then I've already picked quite a few off the bottom over here on this side. So they are looking great. And the Cherokee Purples are more than halfway up the trellis almost reaching the top and so are the brandy boys over there on the other side they're they're almost to the top as well and then we'll step back this way we'll take a look at the islander peppers you can see they have been doing very very well for me i've already picked uh several of these already i did have a few that had, may have had some blossom and rot on them but for the most part all of them are doing uh very good and then there's another ninja pepper plant here that's doing well uh, another uh, islander pepper there some more islander peppers down here on this side and when these islander peppers uh, get the full maturity they will uh, turn a dark red so i'm waiting to see how nice they look when they're finished uh, ripening but uh, that's it for the tomatoes and peppers. And we'll turn around here. We'll take a look at the peach tree I was talking about. You can see I have quite a few peaches on these trees. I actually have two of them. And uh, it looks like this year I may finally get some peaches. We'll see. I did have a lot of them drop off. But that's usually uh, normal for peach trees. Uh, they do tend to drop a lot of fruit. So we'll wait and see how these do. And then the lettuce bed, the lettuce, carrots, and spinach bed just really did not do that good this year. You can see it's quite empty now. I pulled most of the plants out. Uh, the thing that did the best in this uh, bed was the starfighter lettuce it did the best out of anything i planted here in here uh, everything else just did not do that great uh, so and i think that's partly due to the peach trees also shading out this bed here so i definitely have to trim those peach trees up and then you walk around this side these are the scarlet spire apple trees uh, still nothing on those it may take another year or so before I actually get some apples off of these. And then over here on this side, I have the white Russian kale. And you can see I have lots and lots of Russian kale on here to pick. Looking very good. Some, uh, do have some Swiss chard down below there. You can see them growing in there. It looks like we do, do have a little bit of insect damage on these, but, uh, they are coming along nicely. And then look back here there are some colored greens as well you can see a few and a uh, little bit of uh, insect damage on these as well but I haven't been taking care of these that well lately because we just haven't been eating a lot of the greens and uh, so now I'm going to uh, go inside and show you the back porch as well so I can show you how many spaghetti squash I picked and how many tomatoes I've picked so far since I've started harvesting them. Here are the angel hair spaghetti squash that are placed on the back porch. I counted them. There's about 16 of them there. And all of them are turning a nice yellow color. That's the way they're supposed to look. They start out green and then they change to yellow. Uh, right after you pick them, you do have to sit them in a sunny spot and let them um, ripen for about two weeks until they get nice and hard and then they will last about two months after you pick them. So they have a long shelf life.